Hey fellow Vault Dwellers, it's Angry Turtle and today I have for you a full guide for Auto Axe. I know so many of you is waiting for this particular guide. It took me a while to test everything around this new brand new weapon coming next week. Then here we go. Step by step, everything you need to know. First, you probably already know you will unlock this weapon through the scoreboard and you will buy the mods inside the white spring refuge then we go there to save you trouble finding giuseppe that is selling this stuff i will show you very quickly where to go just turn to the right run across it's a little bit running to the right a lot of obstacles and there is the shop it's open and here you will buy all the mods after season 10 will end most likely you will buy a weapon itself here too so far weapon is available through the scoreboard. I bet later on it will be available with the stamps. The same as all the modification. Each one cost 85 stamps. And those are turbo mod, poison mod, electrified mod and burning mod. Okay, now I will show you all those mods and cost of the crafting, the weapon itself. And we'll talk which mods are the best and for what. Just let me go to the workbench. Now. You will find this weapon under Edge Melee Weapons and it's first one on the top. You can start crafting at level 20 and it maxes out at level 50. It will cost you adhesive, gear, oil, screw and steel. The cost is rather standard taking into consideration other weapons. It's all similar and you do not need any perk in order to craft a basic version. Now the modifications. You will be able to put four different modifications. They will require makeshift warrior rank five. So you need this card max out. I still recommend maxing this card out if you want to use this weapon as you will need it to don't constantly fix it. Like it can use extra durability from makeshift warrior. The modifications are not expensive really. Like the price, it's not so hard. It's value varies right slightly depending on which mod you want and now I did test all of them as unfortunately those numbers next to the mods do not tell you much like even the turbo mod just says reduce damage increase rate of fire but how does it translate into real life it doesn't tell you like how much increased fire rate you can see how much reduced the damage is it's basically like halved compared to other mods Poison seems to be the best, then electrified and then burning the lowest, but it's not my experience when I tested those. And I will show you visuals too, I have all of them crafted. So first one will be poisonous mod, because from my testing it is actually the weakest. It does show the highest damage on paper, but it is the weakest. But don't worry too much, I would still go for this look if you want to. The range of damage difference was like up to 10% from the highest, the best mod to the worst mod that is poisonous most likely because most enemies does have higher poison resistance than other elemental resistances then that must be the reason then poisonous. Personally, I don't see the use case for that unless you like the green color. Then we go for the burning mod and this one offers average DPS but simultaneously you can use it with friendly fire to heal friendly NPCs, which is very useful, or friendly players. So I would say it is a huge benefit of using a burning mod, especially that it's not the worst damage-wise. It is medium, even though it does look like the worst from the damage on paper from all those mods, of course better than default one, but it is actually medium. Medium damage output from this modification. Then we have turbo version, this a little bit sparkling one and damage output total DPS is similar to the burning mode. Then there is like no difference in this category using a melee build, but it attacks about twice as fast, which means if you want to maximize your healing, let's say from vampire, or if you happen to roll a furious auto axe and want those stacks to go up faster and use it, it can be a decent option. 
Therefore, medium DPS, about twice the rate of attack compared to other ones. And finally, we have this nice electrified mod. From my experience, this one seems to be doing the highest damage overall. So if you go purely for DPS, this is the mod for you. Unfortunately, does not offer any healing to your allies. Friendly fire will not work with this one. So my favorite is burning mod, but if you really strictly want to maximize your DPS, then electrified one seems to be your pick. And no, I will not be showing you exactly all my testing because it was long and I was taking average time to kill on enemies to compare which one is actually the strongest. As I said, that's like 10% difference. It's not really noticeable in everyday gameplay. You need to watch it in slow motion to actually notice which one is doing the highest DPS. So difference is not huge. You can go purely by look if you want to. That's worth to mention in here. And now let me take this weapon for a spin and show you how it performs on super mutants and other enemies. So let's go and slice and dice some super mutants to show you this weapon in action. First, we go in with electrified mode. And as you can see, it is super efficient. Of course, the build, I will, I will do the build video if you are interested about the best build. For the auto axe, I really like to use it with power armor build. You can do it either way. You can go with power armor, non-power armor, full health, low health. Of course, options are almost limitless. But this is the electrified. Now let me use a little bit of different one. And I'm using non-legendary here first. Then I will show you the legendary variant. Even non-legendary, as you can see, is performing like there is no complaints here those level 100 super mutants are just dying they can stagger you though and that stops the, uh, that's a bug sometimes the sound goes <laughs> no damage then you just release the mouse and start again uh, i do hope those bugs will be slowly addressed over time it's not too many left to be honest at this moment that i'm recording with this auto axe there are still some but not as many so as you can see, it does perform. Okay, uh, the other ones perform similarly. I will show you the poison and turbo on some enemies and then legendary version. So you will have like a full picture. As you can probably notice, as I told you, when I'm swapping between them, it's hard to spot what is actually the difference in kill time because the difference is just so little. So yeah, like you have all those modifications, some are very valid, like turbo and fire, but poison electrify, they don't have those special benefits. They just do different visuals. Like you can see here how much faster it is attacking, but because it is less damage, so overall time to kill is not so much different. It can sometimes kill faster, like it as well, like in case of attacking so fast, you will need to deal with possible server lag. So you are doing a lot of hits with that. And now let me use some legendary and maybe as well in VATS as it does work in VATS. So let's go for Vampire Burning Auto Axe. This one is faster. Swing speed. So we go for that. And that's VATS with extra explosions. With extra explosions, some crits. It is so cool. Like, DPS in VATS is really good. And AP cost is so low that you can actually do power armor VATS build with auto axe. And it is super efficient. It doesn't drain your core too much. It doesn't use too much AP. So you can absolutely use that. And now I want to address the other thing. And not this one. This one. Uh, so far, like this take 40% less damage while power attacking do not work with automatic melee weapons. I don't know if it's intentional. At the moment of recording this video, it does not work. But I don't know if it should or shouldn't. Because generally, attack with automatic melee weapon is currently considered a power attack. And this bonus does work. It does 40% more damage with any attack then I have absolutely no idea what is the intended behavior for the third star. At this moment, it doesn't do anything. 
and he moved a little bit and avoid being shredded in vats. It's the only problem with vats. They tend to sometimes step out and if they do so, you lose the damage. Like he stepped out even though it shows that I should be able to hit him, I cannot. But that's only vats related. Um, without vats there is no such problem. You can just run around and shred them all for most use cases i don't think vats will be needed probably for bosses it is a good idea for non-bosses enemies i don't think so that was a turbo that was a turbo to maximize the furious effect then i was using it with turbo and this one i have with with less action point cost which is really good and that's another downside of turbo like turbo will drain more ap in vats because it attacks so much faster then generally I would prefer this one with slower attack and more damage. You can see how, how well it goes with this less AP cost. I can basically slay in vats like nothing. Uh, let me jump to some Scorch Beast. You probably want to see some bigger hard... Oh, I have better idea. Uh, I will go to slay Super Mutant Behemoth. Oh, wait a second. There is still something left. Sorry for the blinding explosions, but that's how it's working with this perk. Okay, let's explode those guys now. Oh, they didn't explode. Yeah, sometimes they don't. Okay, let's let's go for the big guy, Super Mutant Behemoth. And of course, if you are interested about the best legendary effect, Furious is not the best legendary for this weapon. I would look for a Vampire, Anti-Armor, maybe Bloodied if you want to go low health. Those will be like my choices. They're really good. Or instigating is not bad at all. Instigating will be cool, especially if you want to combine it with tossing some grenades. Then instigating will be still on my top list of choices. And for the second star, faster swing speed. It's like the number one. After that, more power attack damage. And for third star, so far, I will just go with plus one strength if you can get it. Let's see the vats. Some explosions are going on. And... Yeah, the damage, <laughs> like when he's stepping, he's so big that even though I have my hitches... Oh, now it worked. Like he was stepping back and already was out of range, but damage is good. It's just you need to position yourself really well to use these VATs. Uh, I bet in the future it will be improved a little bit by Bethesda, but at this moment you really need to position yourself well to get those damage uh, popping and Colossus or Scorch Beast Queen, that can be a problem. They're just too big. The bigger the enemy, the worse the VATs will perform. It's probably still possible. Maybe future patches will improve on that, as this is a brand new weapon, so I assume there will be a lot of work done. But for now, I hope those are the all information you really need for it. In the future, I will update you how it compares to the Vampire Shredder, as there was a lot of questions about Minigun Shredder, how it compares to Auto Axe. I will do the comparison and I will do the builds for Auto Axe, as I will be using one myself. This is just so cool weapon. And that being said, this is a guide for Auto Axe. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you a lot for watching and see you all in the next one.